Well, praise the Lord. We're glad to be here this morning, and uh, we hope that everyone is blessed. We've got a really special uh, service today, so, but I promised a really good friend of mine by the name of Jimmy that I would sing a particular song for him because he loves it so much, <laughs> and it's a bluegrass gospel. Cowboys and cowgirls and boys and girls. Amen. How many of y'all rather be here than in the hospital? Amen. Well, we have one lady in the hospital and we want to be sure we pray for her today. It's Margie, so we're gonna we're gonna lift her up. But well, we want to welcome you to Cowboys for Jesus. It's gonna be a great day. How many of you are looking for a great day? Amen. And we don't want to forget you folks in your living room out watching a stream. To, to your house and so we want to welcome you also and and let you know that you're welcome and we want the holy spirit to visit you in your home right in your front of your tv and and we want you to be ministered to today through him amen so uh here comes the rest of the folks in we're gonna we're gonna fill it up yet so we're just glad you're here and we want you to feel at home and we want you to relax and enjoy because god's going to move today and uh, Gary promised that it's going to be awesome. That's what you said last week, wasn't it, Gary? So y'all join me and let's pray and ask God to bless this service. Father, we just thank you for your love, for your mercy. Father, we thank you that you're such a good God, the only God, the only one and true God, Father. And we bless you. We love you. We want to serve you, Father. And we want you to minister to us today, Father. Holy Spirit, you are you are free to to guide us anywhere you want us to go and we ask you to take charge of this service and lead everything that we do in jesus name lord just bless it all and and we want to honor you and glorify your name today and all that we do in jesus name amen <laughs> Thank you. 
king of my heart be the mountain where i run the fountain i drink from oh he is my song and let the king of my heart be the shadow where i hide the ransom for my life oh
When I lock eyes with you, I see my reflection. When I lock eyes with you, I feel your affection. Love to get lost in you. You're my obsession. When I lock eyes with you. When I lock eyes with you, I see my reflection. When I lock eyes with you, I feel your affection. Love to get lost in you. You're my obsession. When I lock eyes with you, and all. Just you, just you, Jesus. 
coming like a flood. Coming like a flood. Don't care what it looks Don't like. Care. I'm so in love. So coming like, like a fire. Coming like a flood. I don't care what it looks like. I'm so in love. So coming like a fire. Coming like a flood.
Praise God. Just love that sweet presence of the Lord, right? Just wanted to bring Pastor Chuck up here and introduce him. He's a uh, pastor at Kingdom Life San Antonio where we attend fellowship. And um, I guess I've known Chuck now for about, what, seven years, I guess. He's a Bethel graduate. He's originally from Canada, but we won't hold that against him. He, he got here as quick as he could. And so uh, I'm just going to turn the service over to Chuck now, and we're just going to kind of rest in that holiness that I'm feeling right now. So bless y'all. Amen. Amen. Can we just thank Jesus this morning for his presence and just for being in our midst? Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Can we do that? And uh, let's just give Gary and the worship team a hand. Let's just thank them for leading us. They're all members of our worship team back home in San Antonio where I'm uh, one of the pastors, and um, I want to introduce uh, some of the rest of our team. Stan and Janelle Leland, why don't you guys stand up? Let's welcome Stan and Janelle. And Mark and Susan Ruther from our home church, why don't you guys stand, say hey to them. And, and again, it's just an honor to be here. Um, I want to say thank you to Pastor Jerry and his beautiful wife. And can we just thank God for your pastors? Just for your whole team and your leaders. And so good to see Pastor Jimmy and Beth, who I've known now for years. Let's thank God for them. Can we do that? Just for their pure hearts toward the Lord. And, you know, before I moved to San Antonio, my wife and I used to travel full time, speaking in different churches and ministries. I've been to, I don't know how many countries, been throughout Australia, uh, New Zealand, Europe. And you can really get a sense when you walk into a church, even your first service, um, regarding what type of culture, what type of atmosphere the leaders have cultivated. And I just want to honor your pastors and the entire team for cultivating a love for the presence of God and keeping the main thing the main thing. Let's thank Jesus for them one more time. Hallelujah. You know... Because how many of you know it's one thing to just have church? It's another thing to make room for the presence of God and the Holy Spirit to have His way in our midst. How many of you want the Holy Spirit to have His way in our midst this morning? That I've come to the right place? <laughs> I was told that I was going to a cowboy church and uh, Gary said, so you know, you might want to get a hat, you want to wear boots. And I said, well... I got a denim shirt with snap buttons. Does that work? And he's like, that'll work. He's like, that'll work. So, you know, I'm taking steps into it, but it, it really is just an honor um, to be with you guys. And, uh, and I just want to pray one more time and just welcome Holy Spirit to have his way through the rest of our time together. Holy Spirit, we just say that we love you. If you're comfortable, just lift your hands to heaven. Holy Spirit, we say that we love you this morning. Jesus, we just thank you, even as we celebrated last Sunday, your death and resurrection. I thank you for what you've done. I thank you, Jesus, for making a way to the Father that we might have relationship with you and we might experience your kingdom. Not just when we die someday, but in the here and now, on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. So we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come with a spirit of wisdom and revelation and have your way. I pray that bodies would be healed, hearts would be encouraged, and that your kingdom would come to earth today in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, it is just an honor to be with you guys. Um, I want to let you know about um, a book that my wife wrote. It's called uh, Embracing Mystery, A 21-Day Journey to Hope. By the way, um, my beautiful wife is at home with uh, my three girls. I have five-year-old identical twin girls, Autumn and Charlie. Her name's Charlotte. We call her Charlie. And a one-year-old, uh, London Grace. And uh, so I'm at home with three daughters and my wife. Let's just say I'm very outnumbered. 
So just stretch your hands toward me and say, Lord, help him. No, yeah. So, um, but I'm just so blessed. They're at home. I wish I had a picture to, to show them off. But my wife wrote a book called Embracing Mystery, A 21-Day Journey to Hope. Now, how many of you know that hope is a really big deal in the kingdom of God? And I like to describe hope as this. Hope is to have a joyful, confident expectation. Everybody say joyful, joyful. confident, confident. Expectation, expectation that good is coming. To have hope is to have a joyful, confident expectation of good. I love what Pastor Jerry said earlier. Like He's like, it's going to be a good day. Yeah. I can feel it. If you wake up in the morning with hope, it means you have a joyful, confident expectation that because I have a good God, I can expect good things to happen. Amen. So that's about that. It's about cultivating hope, a 21-day journey to hope. Now, how many of you know it's one thing to have hope when things are going well? It's another thing to have hope when circumstances are challenging your hope level. But how do you know that we still need hope when circumstances are challenging our hope? So this is about embracing mystery. Uh, what do you do when things are happening that you don't understand? How do I believe God is good even when bad things are happening around me? Because how do you know that God doesn't change and he's always good? So those are available out in the lobby. Um, they're $10. If you can't afford it and you want one, just take one, okay? Um, but if you want to do that, you can. Um, how many of you, is there anybody here that has a birthday this week? Birthday this week? Well, this one's for you, sir. Yeah, bless you. What's your name? Donnie. Donnie. Bless you, Donnie. That's for you. Did somebody else raise their hand back here at birthday this week? Sir, grab one on the back table out there. That, there's one, that you, have a, you have a birthday. You grab one on your way out as well. Say that again. Boom. There you go. There you go. Some, some of y'all are like, well, my cousin had a birthday last week. <laughs> yeah, but if you want one, take one, okay? Um, all right. Well, I'm going to share... Um, a word that's on my heart uh, for this morning. Gary, could you just pass me that water there? I forgot it. I'm going to share a word that I feel like um, I really prayed into um, what to share this morning. When I speak places or even when I speak at my own church, I don't like to just preach a canned message that I've preached before because it worked good somewhere else. I like to really pray into, like, Lord, what is it that you're saying to this particular body in this season? And, and I want to share a message that I've prayed into. I want to share a message that I believe really is a message for the entire body of Christ. And I want to talk about being a people of the kingdom. Because how many of you know that when Jesus started his ministry, he started by saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And his primary message throughout the New Testament, and as we'll see in a moment, the primary message from his disciples as they continued his, his ministry was about the kingdom of God. And if you have your Bibles, and I think we're going to put it on the screen, I want to go to Matthew chapter 4, starting in verse 23. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, it says this. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. And healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Now, it goes on to say this. Then his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments. And those who were demon possessed, epileptics and paralytics. And he healed them all. Everybody say, he healed them all. He healed them all. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee, from De Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. Now go to the next scripture. Jesus said this in Matthew 10, verse 7 to 8, as he commissioned his disciples to continue his ministry. And as you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, Raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Let's read this last one together. Everybody say, heal the sick, heal the sick. cleanse the lepers, <laughs> raise the dead, freely. cast out demons, freely you have received, freely. now freely give. 
Last weekend, as I mentioned, we celebrated Easter, Resurrection Sunday, as I like to call it. We celebrated the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, I like to share testimonies. This past Sunday, I preached on the power of the resurrection, and I preached the gospel. And at the end, I said, if anybody has never received Jesus, and you want to receive Jesus as your Savior, I want you to raise your hand toward the back. A lady visiting for the first time raised her hand, gave her life to Jesus, came straight up to the front in the middle of my message, gave me a hug at the front, and got born again. Can we just thank Jesus for that? Gave her life to Jesus. So thank you, God. I'll never get tired of um, people coming into the kingdom of God as we preach the gospel. Amen. But last Sunday, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday and, uh, you know, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But how many of you know that when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, he didn't die and, and re rise again just so that we could get to heaven someday? That's important. But how many of you know that he didn't die on the cross just so that you could get to heaven? He died on the cross so that he could get heaven into you. Amen. Right now. And he came preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Let me just say this. We have, the church has done disservice to the message of the cross. And listen. The gospel of salvation is important. Jesus died on the cross and, and rose again so that we could give our lives to him and be born again and go to heaven someday. But I'd like to propose to you that the gospel is actually way better and much more than that. Amen. He didn't just die so that we could get to heaven. He died so that he could get heaven into us and so that we could release the kingdom of God everywhere we go on planet earth. Amen. Listen, I believe God is delivering the church... From escapism Christianity. Amen. What's escapism Christianity? Escapism Christianity is, well, you know, um, I'm, I'm saved and I'm going to heaven someday. So now I just need to hang in there until either I'm raptured or Jesus comes back. Like I just need to hunker down and, and just, you know, stay out of trouble and, and go to heaven someday. No, how many of you know that that type of lifestyle is no threat to the powers of darkness? But what if we got a revelation... That the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives inside of me. And therefore, everywhere I go, heaven goes. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives inside of me. Therefore, every room that I walk into, the powers of darkness should be afraid because I'm there. That's the gospel. This side of the room is getting really excited. I'm just going to preach to this lady right here. All morning, you and me, okay? It's right here. Guys, this is good news. The gospel is really good news. And I'd like to propose to you that the gospel is better than we think it is. Let me just, let me just give you a little what I believe the gospel is. The gospel isn't just Jesus died so that we can go to heaven someday. Listen, the Bible tells us that when Jesus died and rose again, when he died, he actually went into the very pits of hell itself and took back from the enemy all the authority of the powers of darkness. And when he said, it is finished, he gave the power over sin, sickness, and disease to his church, the body of Christ. Listen, the gospel was prophesied in Genesis. Right from the beginning. And in every book, all the way to the book of Revelation. And I love looking at, you know, little prophecies about Jesus all throughout the Old Testament. How many of you know that, that uh, the, new, the new covenant is concealed in the Old Testament? And the Old Testament is revealed in the New Testament. And, and in Genesis, it says that when the serpent deceived Eve, and Adam and Eve took from the fruit, and therefore sin entered the human race. How many of you know that God had a plan way back then? He wasn't scared. He wasn't worried. Sometimes we think God's worried. And he's like, no, 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 no. I love what Bill Johnson says. God can win with any hand, even a set of twos. <laughs> and even back then, when the enemy thought he won, God prophesied the defeat of the enemy. And he said, although you, serpent, might bruise his heel, he's going to crush your head. Glory. 
And how many of you know that the church is called to continually crush the head of the enemy throughout all of our days on earth? We're called to be a people of the kingdom, seeing his kingdom advanced everywhere we go. But I feel a spirit of revelation in the room that God is just releasing just fresh eyes to see the goodness of God, fresh revelation of your identity in Christ. And when you get a hold of that, you will defeat the enemy everywhere you go. But it's interesting that Jesus said this. He started his ministry by saying, repent. Everybody say repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, oftentimes in the church, when we hear the word repent, we think it means turn from sin. That's important. We're called to turn from our wicked ways. But how many of you know that to repent means to change your mind or change the way that you think? And I believe that in order to see the kingdom of God advanced on the earth, we need to change the way that we think about things. And one of the things that we need to change is the way that we think about God. We need to change the way that we view God. And I like to tell people, like, God is better than we think he is. And as soon as we think we got a revelation that God's good, he's like, that's, that's good, but I'm actually way better than that. <laughs> I, heard, I heard one prophet go to one church and he said, I feel like God is giving you permission to exaggerate his goodness. <laughs> How many of you know that we can't exaggerate the goodness of God? We can pervert it, we can distort it, but you can't exaggerate it. He's infinitely good. Did you Listen, the, the glory of God is simply the goodness of God on display. Remember in Exodus 33 when Moses said, God, show me your glory? God responded by saying, I'm going to cause all of my goodness to pass before you. The glory of God is the goodness of God on display. And I think it's about time that the church put the goodness of God on display everywhere we go. But we need to change our minds regarding how we think about God. And you know, one of the best ways to get a revelation of how good God is, is to look at the life of Jesus. How many of you know that Jesus Christ is perfect theology? Remember in John 14, Jesus has his followers, he has his crew, he has the disciples. Jesus is doing miracles, like his disciples are into it. They're like, Jesus, this is awesome. But when are you going to show us the Father? Remember that? Philip asked him that. And you know what Jesus said? Remember that? Jesus said, Philip, have you been with me this long? And you don't understand that if you've seen me, you've seen him. Jesus Christ is perfect theology. In fact, in Hebrews, and we can put this on the screen... In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, it says this. That might not be at the very beginning, but it says this. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. The Son, Jesus, is the radiance of God's glory. Listen to this. And the exact representation of his being. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. Powerful word. And he had provided purification for sins. And he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. But this is what I want to focus on. The Son, Jesus, is the radiance of God's glory. The exact representation of his being. You want to know what God's like? Look at Jesus. What did Jesus do when he walked the earth? He healed the sick, raised the dead, casted out devils, destroyed the works of the devil. In fact, one time Jesus said this. He said, I have come that I might destroy the works of the devil. In John 10.10, 10, he gave another mission statement. He said, the thief, the devil, comes to steal, rob, kill, and destroy. That I but I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Listen, we saw a few minutes ago, Jesus healed all the sick who came to him. You never see Jesus, you know, turning to one of the sick people and, getting, and saying, you know, I healed this person and that person and that person. But I'm not going to heal you because I want you to hang on to your sickness because it's teaching you humility. It's teaching you perseverance. It's te no, you don't, you don't see Jesus doing that anywhere. So I'd like to propose to you that if we pray for somebody and they don't get healed, the issue is not with God. <laughs> but sometimes we create theologies to make us comfortable with our lack of experience. 
instead of allowing our experience to catch up with the word of God. And it says he healed all who came unto him. My pastor used to say all the time, Jesus ruined every funeral he went to. <laughs> Including his own. <laughs> and I'm thankful that the church is getting a revelation that the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives inside of us. And everywhere we go, we can release him. So that's why when, I, when we train ministry teams in praying for the sick, we tell them, like, don't, Say, God, if it's your will, heal them. No, he showed us 2,000 years ago that it's his will. In fact, by his stripes, we are healed, it says in Isaiah 53. So that's why when I pray for the sick, I don't say, God, if it's your will, heal them. I say, God, thank you that you've already purchased their healing. I declare healing over them in the name of Jesus. Nor should we beg God to heal somebody. Because when we beg God to heal somebody, we're assuming that we have more compassion than he does. But when we actually renew our minds, when we repent, when we change the way that we see God, we start to expect God's goodness to show up. And then it becomes not about how long our prayer is, how holy our prayer is, how holy we were that week. It, it, it's all about him and his goodness. In fact, when you believe God, when you really get a revelation that God is good, you can just put your hand on somebody and say watermelon and they can get healed. <laughs> I believe this. Like, he's good. Like, he's, the gospel's good news. And um, so we need to repent and change the way that we think about, think about God, okay? And realize he's good. The issue's not with him. But we need to also repent and change the way we think about ourselves. That time this lady got excited right here. So I'm going to <laughs> preach to her right here. We're friends right here. How many of you know that we need to see ourselves the way God sees us? And one of the things the gospel does is it sets us free from shame and condemnation. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, if anyone is in... Christ, no, it says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Like, there is no guilt, shame, condemnation for those that are in Christ. Raise your hand if you've been born again. Well then, I have good news for you. You're no longer a sinner. Some people think it's spiritual to say I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No, you're not a sinner saved by grace. You're a saint who sometimes forgets who you are. But when we have a revelation, listen, the gospel says, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. How many of you have ever been convicted for sin? I have. I mean, but God's conviction always comes with love. It always comes with kindness. It's always like, you're better than that. Let me remind who you really are. But what if we got convicted about our righteousness? Like, I want to be so convinced that I'm the righteousness of God that I'm, like, in deep thought in my living room pacing. <laughs> and my wife is like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just really convicted right now. <laughs> and she's like, oh, no, what did you do this time? <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, no, that's the thing. I didn't do anything. It's what he did 2,000 years ago. And he declared me righteous. And I'm righteous in his sight. I'm holy. I'm perfect in his sight. Not because of what I've done, but because he sees me through the lens of the blood of Jesus. And listen, when we partner with shame, guilt, condemnation, we're actually believing the lie that the blood of Jesus wasn't powerful enough to forgive my sin. It's true. And it's actually pride. <laughs> Because we think that we're powerful enough, that we're, our sins are more powerful than the blood of Jesus. They're not. So we have full permission to be convicted about how holy and righteous we are. Everybody say, I'm the righteousness of God. When he sees me, he sees Jesus. That's it. Say, God doesn't just love me. He likes me. He enjoys me. I make him smile. Wow. 
you know, one of the things I love about God is he loves diversity. He loves, he loves uniqueness. I mean, look at creation, man. This is, this is like when I drove into Canyon Lake, um, it's like I'm seeing these beautiful hills and the lake and the canyon-like rocks. Like, it's beautiful. Romans says it speaks of the glory of God. But have you ever noticed that God hasn't made two rocks the same, two trees the same? Every snowflake is different. And every human being is uniquely created in the image of God. And we're all unique. I have identical twin girls. And some people can't tell them apart. But they're still unique in their personalities, in their DNA, in all of that, in their, in their fingerprint. Because we are so uniquely designed by God, how many of you know that each and every one of you can touch the heart of God in a way that nobody else can? That's how much we all move his heart. That's how much he doesn't just love us, he likes us. I, I, I heard one preacher share this story about how he would always like sneak into his room like to have a quiet time with the Lord and he would close the door and he'd kind of tiptoe in there and he'd say, Father, here I am, it's just you and me. And he'd do that every time he was going to have a quiet time with the Lord, just knowing that God was just so excited to be with him. And he said one day he's, he's tiptoeing in and he opens the door and he closes the door behind him and he turns around to say, here I am, God, it's just you and me. And the moment he turned around, he went into an open vision. Now, I don't know what your thoughts are if people still have visions today. I believe they do. I believe that it's in the book. If it happened then, it can happen now. And he turns around and has a vision. And it's like he heard in the spirit all of heaven go, shh. And it's like the Father silenced heaven. And, and, and just all the angels, he silenced, he just went, shh. My son's here to spend time. What if we all understood that that's how we move the heart of God? How many of you think that we'd expect our prayers to get answered? <laughs> how many of you think that we believe that when we walk into a room, he walks into a room? We're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I just want to say, if there's anybody here, you've been battling shame, guilt, condemnation... I just declare that breaks off of you this morning in the name of Jesus. I declare freedom over your heart and mind and you have permission to forgive yourself because he has forgiven you in Jesus' name. Man, the Holy Spirit's really here this morning, isn't he? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's how we need to see ourselves. And that word new creation, it's the, it's the Greek word kainos. Everybody say kainos. It means novel, extraordinary, never before seen. That's who we are in Christ Jesus. That's why in one of his letters, did you know that Paul rebuked the church for acting like mere humans? <laughs> we're not mere humans. We're humans, but we're humans filled with the Spirit of God. We're supernatural. Everywhere we go, he goes. And 2 Peter 1.4 says this, says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Everybody say, I'm a partaker of the divine nature. We have the DNA of God in us. Listen, that's why Paul, or I mean Peter in the book of Acts, it says that Peter would just walk down the street and people would bring the sick so that just Peter's shadow would fall on them and they would be healed. Now, I don't think it was his actual shadow like you see my shadow right there. I think it was the overshadowing presence of God on Peter that if people just got close enough to him, they'd be healed of their sickness. Why? He knew who he was and he knew whose he was. He had a revelation of the goodness of God and understood his identity in God. He thought rightly about himself. I believe that when we, have, when we think properly about God, when we think properly about ourselves, we'll see people healed by mistake. <laughs> Do 
just by being in their midst. I like to tell our church all the time, like, you know how at church we, like, pray for somebody and we say, okay, let's stretch our hands towards so-and-so. And we believe we can release the power of God toward that person as we're praying. I tell our church, you can do that in public everywhere you go. You just don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> just smile at them. Look them in the eye and allow the Holy Spirit to just flow through you into that cashier. Look that waitress in the eye and just allow your kindness and the Spirit of God emanating from you to get on her. And just release healing, release breakthrough. Listen, we should be the type of people that everywhere we go, people feel and experience the tangible presence of God. Because we're filled with Him. Because He lives inside of us. I have a friend in California where I went to ministry school who uh, really has a revelation of his identity in God. and He's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Everywhere he goes, Jesus goes. And he, and he went into a restaurant one time uh, to buy a salad. He went into Trader Joe's, not a restaurant, re uh, uh, grocery store. And he went to buy a salad, and there was only one chicken salad left. So he picked up the chicken salad, and he thought, nah, I don't want that one. And he put it back down and grabbed a different salad and left. What he didn't know is there was a, a, a ministry school student behind him going to buy a salad as well. And she, when he picked up the chicken salad, she said, oh, that's the one that I wanted. But then she saw him put it down and said, okay, I can get it. And then she goes and she picks up the salad. Now, what you need to understand is this, this lady had female issues where uh, she, she wasn't having her time of the month, if you will, and therefore didn't think she would ever be, uh, be able to have kids. Well, my friend has seen so many females healed of female conditions and, and um, tumors on ovaries, tumors in the uterus, all of those healed, all of those instantly healed so many times. He just believes it happens everywhere he goes. But he didn't know this gal was behind him in line. He, she, he just put the salad down. She picked up the salad after him. The moment she touched it, she felt the presence of God flow through her and she was instantly healed of a female condition that she had for years just because she touched that salad. Can we thank Jesus for that? You might be like, that's weird. It's not my fault. <laughs> you want weird? Read the Bible. I mean, Jesus spit in mud and put it in people's eyes and they were healed. I mean, Jesus did stuff that if he walked into a church and did some of it now, we'd be like, well, I don't know if I want that. Am I? You know, that makes me feel uncomfortable. How many of you know God's not overly concerned with how comfortable you are? <laughs> the Holy Spirit might be the comforter, but that's because God makes us uncomfortable. <laughs> and sometimes God will actually make us uncomfortable in order to reveal things that are in our heart. Sometimes he'll offend our minds to reveal our hearts. Is anybody like open to the Holy Spirit offending you sometimes? How many of you want God to be God? And break out of your box and do what he wants to do. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And sometimes we try to domesticate him. But he's a lion. I love, I love the Chronicles of Narnia. They're talking about Aslan, the lion who represents Jesus. And they said, is he safe? He said, oh, no, he's not safe. He's good, but he's not safe. Their point was this. He might do things that make you feel uncomfortable, but it's always worth it because we want the kingdom of God. You guys doing okay? Everybody say the same spirit. There rose Jesus from the dead, lives inside of me, and he wants out everywhere I go to touch the people around me. I was ministering in Australia, and um, you know, we, were, we were seeing God heal people, and um, there was uh, somebody on the front row, and uh, I was just like sharing a testimony of somebody that got healed, and I was just kind of telling a story, and I was like, just as an example, I was like, you know, even if you like lay hands on somebody and you say, be healed in Jesus' name, I'm just like doing that as an example. What I didn't know is the person on the front row had uh, uh, an injury in their Achilles tendon on the back, and the moment I touched them, the power of God went through them, and they were instantly healed of that. I had no idea. How do you know that it had nothing to do with me? It had everything to do with him. And when it comes to releasing the kingdom of God, we need to understand that he does all the heavy lifting. <laughs> he just lets us be a part of it. And he's better than we think he is. And uh, I can just feel, I, just, I can just feel kind of like, 
revelation come into people's hearts and minds? And how many of you know that the day of the one-man show is over? It's not just men and women of God that stand behind pulpits and preach. They get to minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. But we are the priesthood of all believers. That we all get to do the stuff. We all get to lay hands on the sick and see them healed. We all get to release the kingdom everywhere we go. It could be a simple word of encouragement to somebody in the grocery store. It could be just seeing somebody, you know, walking down the street on crutches. And you just, you just decide to move in boldness. By the way, how many of you know that courage isn't the absence of fear? It's just not allowing fear to tell you what to do. And just choosing courage and going up to that person and say, Hey, I noticed that you're limping. What happened? They, they share... Well, I'm a Christian. I believe that God heals people. Is it okay if I just pray for you right now? Usually they think you mean, like, can I pray for you when I go home? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, sure, thanks. Like, no, I mean right now. Can I pray for you right now? Uh, sure. Is it okay if I just put my hand on your shoulder? All right. Lord, I just thank you that you love him. I thank you that you love Chris and that you don't want him to be in pain. You love him and you see him and you want him to be well. I just release healing into his body right now in the name of Jesus. Chris, how's it feeling, man? Just move it around a little bit. It's just, it's so fun to see people's faces. I've had people drop the F-bomb because they were so shocked that they got healed. I'm just telling you the truth. I've seen people cuss because they don't know Jesus. How many of you know we can't expect people that don't know Jesus to act like Christians? <laughs> they're so shocked that they're like, and that's how I know they really got healed. <laughs> and I'm like, crazy, right? He loves you. Guys, there's a generation out there. They don't want religion. They want reality. And his name's Jesus Christ. And we need to allow the kindness of God to lead people to repentance by putting his love and glory on display everywhere we go. You guys doing okay? Man, what's that? I got, a, I got a new friend. Man, it's just, it's good news. And uh, can I just tell one more story? I was, I was, in, I was in Australia ministering with some, with some people um, in a place called Byron Bay. And it was like s summer break, so there's college students out everywhere on the streets, coming out of the restaurants, coming out of bars, and, you know, 20 some year olds and I was with a group of ministry school students and we walked in front of this bar and there's a bunch of young people out front and and I'm like excuse me they said yeah I said hey we're a group from California and when we pray for people we see miracles now how many of you know that gets that gets the attention of, of a group of people you know, good or bad but they're like okay and I said do any of you have pain in your body and one of the young men told on his friend he said he has back pain he's been talking about it all day and I said, awesome, well, we're going to pray for you. And one of the young men that was in this group, not with me, but on the street, he said, well, I'm a Christian. I said, awesome, then you're going to pray for his back. He said, what? I said, uh-huh. I thought, I may as well just equip the saints while I'm here, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, I said, put your hand on his back. So he puts his hand on his back. I said, repeat after me, kingdom of God come. He goes, kingdom of God come. All pain go. He goes, all pain go. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. And then I said, okay, his name was Nick. I said, Nick, try to do something that you couldn't do before. So Nick slowly starts to bend over, he touches his toes, he straightens up, and he cusses. <laughs> and he said, holy blank. He said, I haven't been able to touch my toes since I was 12 years old. And, all, and he just kept bending, he said, all the pain's gone. I said, that's Jesus. He just healed your back. And I said, so... Nick didn't even give his life to Jesus yet, but he became an evangelist. <laughs> and now we start stopping the people that are walking by, saying, come, heal my, come meet my friends who just prayed for my back and it got healed. So now a small crowd is gathered around, and we start prophesying over people. We start calling the gold out of people and telling people the good things that God has to say about them. How many of you know that most people know they have issues? But a lot of people have never heard, especially a Christian, call the good things that God sees in their life and allow his kindness to lead them to repentance. 
So we start calling out the gold and these young people were prophesying over them, talking about their destiny and their giftings, and they're confirming, they're like, that's totally you, I told that about you. And, and they're just confirming it all. And then I just shared the gospel. I said, listen, I'm not talking about a list of rules. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about asking Jesus Christ, the king of the universe who created you, who has spoken to your hearts. How many of you want to ask him to come live inside of you right now? I said, we can do that right now. And, and they're like, okay. And one of, the, one of the young ladies goes, can we hold hands while we pray? I said, absolutely. So we're in a circle with young adults, five to seven young adults, gave their life to Jesus, got born again right in front of the bar in Australia right there. Let's just thank Jesus for that. Why? Because the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives inside of us. And everywhere we go, we can release him. Let's all stand together, if you can. Just put your hand on your heart. If we could have, um, Gary, if you want to go back up, or if the worship team wants to go back up, um, just to play a little bit. We're going to minister to a few people. But I believe in the power of declaration. I believe that, that when we speak truth, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's not enough to read the word of God. Sometimes we need to speak the word of God. So this is going to be just truth that I preached. This, everybody say this out loud. Say the kingdom of God has come, God has come to, earth to earth through Jesus, through Jesus. And, the the and the power of the Holy Spirit. Because of what Jesus has done, I am the righteousness of God. I am the, righteousness. the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives inside of me. As he is, so am I in the world. Everywhere I go, he goes. I can lay hands on the sick and see them healed. I speak life to those around me. Heaven is invading earth through me. The kingdom of God is being advanced in Canyon Lake, in Texas, in this nation, and in the nations of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just thank him one more time. Now you can go ahead and grab a seat just for a minute. Everybody just put your hands in front of them like this, like you're going to receive something from heaven. Father, I thank you for the spirit of revelation. Just fix your, fix your heart and your, your mind on Jesus right now. Lord, I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we might know you more, that we might know what you're like, Father, and we might know who we are in you. I pray, Lord, that if there's been any wrong thinking about your goodness and about our identity in you, that you would renew our minds and that we'd have a fresh revelation of how good you are and how I carry you everywhere I go. I pray that you would release it right now all over the room. I pray that you would release the gift of faith I pray that you would release boldness and courage. I pray that you would release supernatural joy and refreshing all over the room right now. I pray that you would release fresh hope because you're good. Release it right now, Lord. In Jesus' name. Let's just sing just for a minute that chorus we were singing, You Are Good. Or God is so good, that one. God is so good. Let's just sing that together and declare it. God is so good. God is so God is so good, He's so good to me. God, you're so good. Just begin.
began to tell him. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. Just sing it again. God, God just wants to release healing into your body. I felt like during worship, there's some specific things I felt like God wanted to heal. And I felt like there was somebody with, uh, with a, a shoulder, it's like rotator cuff uh, pain. Um, you have trouble moving your shoulder with, without pain. If that's you, I want you to stand where you are. Anybody with shoulder pain, I just want you to stand where you are. We're going to pray for you. I felt like God was touching arthritis in the hands. Um, anybody, um, I, I feel like it was especially ladies, but probably men too. Uh, arthritis pain in the joints, in the hands. If that's you, just stand where you are. Thank you, Jesus. Those that stood, some of you are feeling the tangible presence of God just rests on you right now. This lady right here in the black cardigan, I just see the presence of God just resting on you. Just start to move your, was it for your hands? Just start to move them. And I feel like God's touching you even right now in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you for it. I thank you for it. And there's somebody with lower back pain. It might even be a pinched nerve, but I feel like it was lower back pain. Who is that? It's specifically lower back pain, okay? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that you're good and you love to touch your kids. The rest of you, I want you to look around and if you see somebody standing near you, I want you to stretch a hand toward them or even just gently put your hand on them where it's appropriate. And I want you to ask them quickly what it is they're standing for. And I don't want you to pray quite yet. I don't want you to pray quite yet. I just want you to ask them what they're standing for. Now, those that stood, before they even pray for you, I want you to test it out and see if you're already better. Because God's that good. Some of you are already better. The, the pain's already gone as you test it out. As you stand and you test it out, wave at me right now if the pain's already gone. Right here, right here, right here, right back here. Pain's already gone. All right, let's thank Jesus for that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you. We love you. You're amazing. Okay, the rest of you, I want you to ask what they're, if you've already asked, okay. Now what I want you to do, I want you to say, Lord, thank you for healing them. Kingdom of God come, all pain go. Be healed in Jesus' name. On earth as it is in heaven. I command your body to come into alignment with heaven and be healed. Somebody's right knee is being healed. Test it out right now. You came in with right knee pain. Test it out and I feel like God's healing that. So Father, I just thank you for healing these bodies right now in Jesus name just begin to release the presence of God over their body and say I release the power of the Holy Spirit into your body and I declare healing into your body right now I take authority over pain sickness disease and I say come out of them and get off of them now in the name of Jesus Christ and I thank you for it God I thank you for it in Jesus name in Jesus name Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Just start to test it out. Those that are getting prayer, try to do something you couldn't do. If it's your fingers, move them around. If it's your back, bend over. If it's your knee, test your knee. 
just try to do something you couldn't do and see how you're feeling. I, I get to see people getting healed right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wave at me if all the pain's gone. Wave at me if all the pain's gone. Right here, let's thank Jesus for that. Right here, right back here. Anyone else, as you test it out, all the pain's gone. Wave at me, nice and wave at me again. Okay, right here, right here. Anyone else? Right here, all the pain's gone. Come on, let's thank Jesus for that. All right, real quick, we want to hear some testimonies. If you just got prayer and all the pain's gone, I want you to come up here quickly. We want you to share. I just want to ask you real quick what happens so we can celebrate with you. Can we get this mic on? All right, all right. Wait, what's your name? Madeline. Madeline, what did you get prayer for? I have prayer for my rotator cuff, for my knees, and for my hands and arthritis. Wow. And it's gone. It's all the pain's gone. All the pain is Come on, let's thank Jesus. Let's give glory to Jesus. I could not do that. I could not do that. Thank you, God. Come on. Lord, Lord. Glory of Sunday, of the LC. Thank you, Jesus. So good. And Father, I thank you that you're so good and let it never come back in Amen. Jesus' name. Bless you. What's your name, sir? Roger. What happened? Well, lower back and uh, shoulder, and it's just loosened up. I mean, it, the pain is gone, and I'm feeling a lot better. Come on. It's so good. Amen. Let's celebrate. I'm, I'm healed. I'm healed. Amen. Oh. What's your name, ma'am? I'm Sandy. Sandy, what happened? Oh. <laughs> I, I, I was hurting so bad today because of the arthritis and the fibromyalgia and just the pain was intense and the medicine wasn't doing the job. And as soon as the prayer started, I just felt it. It just started going and look at me. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's stretch our hands towards Sandy. Sandy, I, you are a carrier of the joy of the Lord. Yes. And you're going to release yes. his joy everywhere you go. Yes. Even into your immediate family. Yes. In Jesus' name. Thank and I see God doing something even. Do you have kids? Yes, I do. He's doing something special in your kids this year in Praise Jesus' God. name. Thank and you. I thank you for it, thank Lord. Thank you. Amen. Hi. Amen. Thank you. Hi. What happened? Hi. I'm I'm Lorinda, and when you said shoulder, and I just always have a chronic shoulder pain because of a torn rotator cuff, and it's gone. Come on! <laughs> so praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank so you. good. Um, Ken, I fell three years ago, and uh, from 18 feet, shattered my heel uh, on a concrete paver shattered the heel with that um, broke l2 and l3 in my back i uh, had three surgeries on the foot uh, cracked my head open on another paver and broke that one and uh, uh, constant pain give or take in the hip and the back and it's gone come on that's amazing <laughs> thank you lord thank you lord what's your name alice alice what happened? Um, rotator cuff in the lower back, and it's gone. Come on. Thank God, it's so good. That's so good. <laughs> so you did you have pain today? Oh, yes. And oh, on, yes. on a scale from 1 to 10, how bad was the pain? Uh, the, in the back, about one, about 6 or 7, a okay. little over half. Yeah, in the shoulder? In the shoulder, yeah. How was, bad was the shoulder? Well, it's, it's just there all the time. It was there all the time. And it's not there now. <laughs> how, how long have you had it? Ten years? Ten years. Probably. Like, and pretty constant. Yeah. And it's all gone. Let's thank Jesus for thank that. You. Lord, you're amazing. Hi, my name is Sherry, and I have arthri had arthritis in my right hand, and uh, my finger's even starting to straighten out. Oh, my goodness. It come on. No pain. No pain. So, when you come back next week, we'll do this hand. <laughs> let's thank Jesus for this. Come on, let's all stand again. 
Come on, let's just tell him that he's good. Just in your own words, begin to tell Jesus, all glory to you, Jesus. Tell him how good he is. Thank you, Father. You, you know, sometimes miracles are instantaneous and healing can be progressive. Uh, there was two lepers that Jesus prayed for and it says, as they went, they were healed. So I just want to declare that some of you, as you go this morning, you're going to be healed. So if you don't feel your healing manifested yet, don't give up. Just believe that, just keep thanking Jesus for your healing. Say, Lord, thank you for what you're doing. I receive it in Jesus' name. And I want to encourage you, just keep believing in the goodness of God and release him everywhere you go. And I know if you need to, if you need to go um, uh, this morning, be dismissed. God bless you. Um, I'm going to ask the team to come on up quickly. And uh, they're going to release just a few words of encouragement over some people that they see. So come on up. Let's just welcome them as they come up. And you go ahead and, you go ahead and grab a seat. If you need to slip out, you can slip out. Um, but I'm going to ask them to release some just, just brief, powerful, prophetic words over, over some of you. Check. Is that on? Okay. Is that on? Okay. Earlier in worship, I just enjoyed the presence and the Lord said, Mark, these people are my people. They understand me. They love the land. They love my people. And they're going to tip the bowls for Texas. And he says, your prayers are being answered. And I saw him walking across Canyon Lake and it was a fire and there were rains coming and the flood cannot put out the fire of the Lord. Expect great change. I heard this, that wayward children will be returning and they will bring many with them. So prepare, make a place for them. It's his love that will keep them. So keep loving people well as you love him. Amen. Amen. Um, I think, did you say your name was Roger? I, as we were driving up here today, I noticed that there was just not a, a cloud in the sky. And my father-in-law has a saying saying it's a severe clear. And I, I heard the Lord say that there is a severe clear sky over you. There's an open heaven that he hears your prayers. He knows your prayers are being answered. You steward everything well. Don't be afraid to ask what you need, what you want from the Lord. He knows that you're going to steward it well. There's an open heaven over you. And you're going to receive and give it all out to everywhere you go. I feel like the Lord wants me to say, there's such a sweetness in that room over there. And I walked in there this morning, I said, wow, this is not just your coffee bar. This is a special place and saw you eating together. And I feel like the Lord is saying what happens in there directly affects what happens in here. That is a really holy, holy room. <laughs> and this room is too. This morning, I, I met her just before Sherry, met her just before, um, uh, worship because we were doing it. We were circling up in here to pray and she came and and broke in and was holding my hand and I heard the word deliverer and then I saw this picture. I don't know if you work in there in the kitchen or you offer food through the bar, but anyway, I had a picture of you doing that and and you're as you're nourishing people, you're giving life and then I saw a picture of, of you in my sanctified imagination talking about deliverer, I saw this, this head of something and you're holding it underwater and you are contending. And I see like a cartoon version of, you know, bubbles coming up. No, you're going under because you are not taking me out and you're not taking any of my loved ones out. And you're bringing life, you're bringing life and you're speaking life and you're saying no to you, 
know you're bringing a deliverance in your prayers and in your contending and in your giving of nourishment to people. I heard this <clears throat> verse earlier, and I believe it's really for everyone. It's Psalm 32, 8, and it says, I hear the Lord saying, I will stay close to you, instructing and guarding you along the pathway for your life. I will advise you along the way and lead you forth with my eyes as your guide. I just, I feel that that's just for this whole body. He's just so close. He's He's going along that whole pathway. He's instructing you as you seek him, and he is leading you wherever you go. Amen. Can we thank Jesus this morning? Amen. Just put your hand on your heart. Father, I just thank you so much for this beautiful, wonderful community of Jesus followers. I pray, Lord, that we would leave this morning with a fresh revelation of how good you are and who we are in you and that we would release the kingdom everywhere we go because we're kingdom people in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's thank the Lord one more time. Listen, if you, if you want any more prayer, if you still want specifically healing in your body, Stan and um, uh, probably some of the other team uh, we'll be over on this side of the room if anybody wants more prayer for healing. Um, besides that, God bless you guys. Thank you so much, Pastor Jerry and the team, for having us. It's an honor to be with you guys, and God bless you. We love you all. I would say that uh, we're the honored ones. Uh, how, how many of you know that this is a man after God's own heart? How many of you know he's a man after my own heart? Amen. <laughs> we, we have a kindred spirit, brother, as far as all that stuff that you talked about goes. And everybody doesn't believe that way, but it's nice to meet you and Thank know you that well. you do. Thank you so much. We appreciate you coming. Oh, Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bless you. I forgot that we're going to have communion. <laughs> what, what, a good way to, what, what a good way to wrap up the service. If you could start lining up to come get the elements, the bread and the juice to take back to your seats, that'd be great.
I love taking communion because I believe that when we take the bread and the blood, we're not just remembering what he did. We're actually proclaiming the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I even just want to declare that some of you, even as you take communion with a revelation of what Jesus paid for 2,000 years ago, that you would be physically, spiritually, and emotionally healed in Jesus' name. So Jesus, we come before you and we thank you for laying your life down. We thank you for your broken body that was broken for us on the cross. We take this in remembrance of you. Let's take the bread together. Jesus, we thank you for your shed blood that flowed from your body for the redemption of our sins. That rivers of living water might flow from us everywhere we go. So we thank you for your shed blood. We take this in remembrance of you. And I say the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. It says they sang a hymn before they left. Amen. So sit tight. The Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you be gracious unto you the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace oh. generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 he is for you
Have y'all got a couple of more minutes? Well, we got three testimonies of guys that want to give testimonies. And I want to um, alert you to the fact that there's going to be hats back at the back as you go out. And if these guys blessed you, let's, let's give them an offering to take home, okay? That'd be all right. And don't forget to buy a book. Anyway, we got we got three testimonies. Oh, just Mars. Last Friday, the uh, four of us went shooting on a trap line in San Antonio. And during the first round, my back and shoulder went out. I almost went down. I stopped the shoot, sat down at a table and told the guys I could not continue with the pain I was receiving and experiencing. They immediately came to my aid, put their hands on my shoulder, my head, my back. Within two minutes, my pain was gone. I'm back up on the line. We're shooting breaking birds. <laughs> These three gentlemen were responsible for that. This is Jerry, Jerry, Bill, and Bucky did all that. Thank you, God. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Jerry. How many of you glad you came to church today? How do you know when you've been to a cowboy church? Y'all come back now. You here? Amen.